This morning, we're glad to have with us um, Zach and Zoe Jones. Zach, a lot of his teenage years, was here uh, with us at Bethesda until he got the bright idea to go off to college somewhere and, and all that. But, you know, we hated to see him leave. And then as, as Zoe popped around and Zach fell in love, Zach got Twitter paid it. And now him and Zoe are married, serving Jesus together. Um, but all of us here at the church know Zach's gone through a lot. And Zoe have gone through a lot. But yet, their faith has not wavered. And Zach's going to come, and he's going to take some time here just to share with us his testimony. And so, um, Zach, I know you're a football player, so move it a little faster. <laughs> but uh -huh. Is this thing on? All right, perfect. All right, they limited me to 15 minutes. So let's see how that goes. <coughs> anyway, all right. So we all have interruptions in our lives, right? Whatever it's work, jobs, this is a movie that we want to see. You know, me, I'm a video game guy. So is my dad. So I get distracted sometimes. Um, but mine personally was my sport. Uh, for those who don't know, I was a uh, football player at Kentucky Wesleyan College. Played football through high school. And went on to college to play uh, even further. You know, even throughout my years of football, I always thought I put God first. I always said that was my identity. I was a child of God. And nothing would put it further. But as I went into college, football turned into a hobby. It turned into a job. And it turned into my identity. I would wake up at 4.30 in the morning. I'd go straight to practice. From practice to breakfast, breakfast to a meeting, meeting to a lift, back to another meeting, and so on and so on. And when I had time by myself, I wasn't really the good Christian boy that would read his Bible. I said, man, I'm tired, and I'd go to sleep. But I was never tired for football. Every time I was at practice, I was active. But every time it came with my relationship with the Lord, I was too tired to do it. So I kind of put my relationship with the Lord on the back burner. And for those who don't know me, this whole story started in the summer of my junior year. So I was doing what I usually do in the summertime. I was doing a football workout. And uh, after every workout, I usually eat lunch. And uh, when I was eating lunch at my kitchen table, I had sudden pain in my body. And it went on for a couple hours. Uh, for the ones you would think, you know, if you have sudden pain and you think you go straight to the ER. Um, I had a tire appointment. I uh, had to get some new tires. And uh, my wife tells me I'm a little stubborn. So I went to the tire appointment first and then went to the ER. My, my wife got pretty mad at me, but, you know, it's all good. <laughs> So I went to the ER, and they did their scans, and they did what they needed to do. And they said, oh, it's just a cyst. You know, just, here's some antibiotics. You'll be good to go. And I was like, oh, sweet. Awesome. We'll get it fixed. I go back to football. About a month later, this time it's fall camp. I'm going to practice. Same thing. Sudden pain. This time I went to my athletic trainer, and he's like, you need to go to the hospital if this has happened before. And I said, okay. So I got more scans, more scans. Except this time... They weren't so sure it was a cyst. See, the mass that they saw doubled in size in one month. So I went to, they sent me to a urologist, and uh, he informed me that I would have to have immediate surgery to get that tumor removed. So that, and after that, after that surgery was over, I had a meeting with him again, and he informed me that I had cancer. And that part was kind of tough to hear. I know it sounds kind of funny. Um, that didn't really hurt my feelings too much because I was like, you know, the Lord's got me. You know, death doesn't really scare me too bad. Not right now. But <laughs> um, 
but you know, it doesn't really worry me too much. But what hurt me the most is what he told me second. And he said, you are never going to be able to play football again. And immediately, I just sat there, and it felt like something was just ripped away from me. And that's when I realized how important it was to me. And I was just in shock. So for several weeks, I don't really listen to doctors, so I try to find a different way. Um, I went to my athletic trainer, went to the team doctor, tried to convince my surgeon, and went on whoever I could, and I said, is there any way I can still play? Is there any way? And they all said no, over and over and over again, because they told me the risk of getting re-injured and ruining my body was way greater than the reward. <sighs> when I realized that, I remember going to my home and I just began to cry. Because, like I said, it was just ripped. And throughout the weeks, I called my dad. And, you know, he checked up on me and seen how I was doing. And, you know, he was asking me, you know, how you feel. And I said, Dad, you know what's sad? And he said, what's that? I said, I'm not even scared. I'm not scared. I'm, I'm not worried about death. I'm not worried about my disease. I'm angry. I'm angry that... My life was flipped upside down, and I'm angry that my sport was taken away from me. I'm angry. And, of course, this is what you know, he told me, and I didn't really want to hear it. I said, well, did you tell God? And I was like, no, like a toddler. I went back to toddler age. No, I didn't, I didn't tell him. So I went on to that night, and I started praying a lot. And I just told the Lord, I said, God, I I don't understand. I'm mad. I'm angry. Why was that taken away? I don't even understand. I was doing a good job. I was a starter. I was doing good. And, uh, you know, this verse kind of popped up. And it was Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. But seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. And I was like, okay. So I don't know what's going on, but I just got to trust. All right, sounds good. Let's try this. So I started to spend more time with the Lord, and through the more time that I had, this is when treatments were starting to happen, I had a sense of strength and peace through all of my treatments. I had my good days and my bad days. My wife kind of saw more of the dad days. Um, but... I was still able to be my silly self through treatment. The nurses loved me. I used to tell them that my wife abused me. Sometimes social service would walk in there. Um, <laughs> it's all good, though. I didn't get her too in trouble. Um, so, you know, after three months of treatment, got three rounds done, and they said, you're all good to go. And I said, hey, I'm done. Let's go celebrate. And we haven't been able to see family in three months. I mean, we've been isolated, and I was just beat up. So we went to Georgia to see Zoe's grandparents, and we were out to lunch with them. I think we traumatized them after this. But I received a phone call from the hospital, and I'm thinking it's just scans. You know, I'm like, all right, we'll just get some more blood work done. And he called me, and they said, hey, we need to schedule up a surgery. And I said, huh? And he's like, we made a mistake. Your lip nodes didn't shrink at all. The chemo didn't work. So we need to do surgery and remove those lip nodes. And once again, it was that same sunk feeling like, man, I was almost done. <laughs> and it was just like, no, not really, not yet. But instead of going into self-pity like I did when football happened, I was like, all right, we got to refocus. We got to stay focused. got to stay focused. It's okay. You're going to get through this. Had surgery. I can finally say I'm cancer-free. <laughs> and 
And something through all this that I realized that Zoe and I kind of went through this. You know, we had to fully rely on the Lord, fully, because we had no control. We don't really have control in the first place, but we have a sense of control, right? But we didn't have control. And we experienced a lot of scares and felt a lot of pressure. And when I was trying to make this speech or, or whatever you call it, um, I was praying through it, and I saw this verse because I was listening to my audio book. And uh, it's 1 Peter, first, 1 Peter, verse 7. And it says, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. And through your faith, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you more, much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus is revealed to the whole world. So what did that say to me? Well, it talked about gold and the trials that you experience, right? And our faith is better than gold. So my analogy, I know they use gold, but I was thinking of diamonds. Diamonds start as rocks, right? But through tons and tons and tons of pressure, diamonds are created. It's the same way. We start out as rocks, but God is putting pressure and trials and all these things so that we can be something more than just something that is out in the world. So everything that I went through, I could see the Lord moving. And this is where we're going to jump for a couple months, go through my timeline. Um, so we went to, I had a class, it was like a reading class, and uh, there was a creative project. And the creative project was to write a poem. I'm not much a poem guy. I'm a big old football player. I don't do that stuff, right? Well, the Lord said otherwise. So um, I was looking at this creative project, and I looked at it, looked at it over and over, and I was, the Lord was like, you need to do that. And I was like, poem? <laughs> Why do you want me to write a poem? I was like, what are you talking about? I don't even know how to write my name. <laughs> They're going to teach me how to sign my last name next year. <laughs> but anyway, so I ended up writing this poem, and it took a lot of prayer through all of it. And I'll just have you guys listen to it. So here you go. Life passes by like wind through the air, and I went through life not expecting something to give me a scare. My priorities were in athletics in order to feel whole, but this does not fill my soul. I put my identity into something that should not have been, and this is when my life took a spin. Usually when I feel pain, I would push through it anyways, till one day the pain was too great. I go see professionals around the state, and they all say that it is not good for my fate. I was informed that I could no longer play the sport I adored, and this broke me because all the time that I put in it, more than I would want to admit it. My body turned on me like as a crew turned on the captain. And how do I react? Do I react in fear or do I run to the father that is near? Though my health plummets as a ship sinks into the ocean, he does not leave, even though that is what the enemy wants to perceive. As I begged for it to go away, instead it decided to stay. And in the midst of my confusion, the enemy attacks, but my God, he does not leave. As I progress through treatment, it gets tougher and tougher, and the enemy wants to pull me down further and further. But my God, he does not leave. As I get weaker and weaker, the enemy throws more and more at me, but my God, he does not leave. Where I feel I cannot see through this storm, what do I do? Do I turn and let the storm overtake and bring me down more and more? Or do I turn to the Father to instead praise him through this storm? Where I expected good news, the disease instead continues to abuse. I set up the appointments and feel almost all hope is lost and thought, how much will this cost? But my God, he does not leave. As I go into surgery, my stress levels rise, but, I, but peace sets over me to my surprise. 
because my God, he does not leave. You see, I learned that God works even when we cannot see. I learned that his plans are better than mine because that is according to his design. And even when my health declined, my God is still divine. Where the enemy wanted fear, instead God provided comfort. Where the enemy wanted to bring destruction, instead God provided protection. And where you think weakness would be, instead God gave strength. Where the enemy wanted to give confusion, God provided clarity. And where I felt all hope was lost, God gave a purpose. You see, my identity was put into something that will pass, but now I put my identity into something that surpass. Where I was going through a trial I felt I couldn't bear, God was there and aware. For my God is never changing, never ending. He gives comfort to the broken, peace to the confused, and strength to the weak because that is who God is, and I know that I am his. So, there may be an obstacle that you have in your life, whatever it's hardship or something that is distracting you from the Lord. I just want to tell you those things are temporary. They're temporary. Something that I didn't know until now. But I can tell you something that is not temporary. And that's our relationship and the reward that we receive. You see, I allowed my sport to get in the way. And the, short, and the Lord kind of showed me that was not a good thing. <laughs> um, and earth is cool and all. And I love seeing the people here. But imagine, imagine seeing the Father face to face. And just worship him for the rest of your days. No more pain. No more fear. No more anxiety. And it's eternal. Don't do what I did. Don't let the distractions of this world get in your way. Because the Lord will show you. It was a little hard. It was some discipline, but it was worth it. That's all I got.